this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech today talking about something rather serious in the magic community, the theft of magic cards. There are some huge problems going on currently and a few positive stories coming out about this particular topic. Magic cards are liquid cash, especially high-end cards like the promo Liliana the Veil that recently an individual was caught with over a hundred copies of this card that had been stolen from Wizards of the Coast. I believe it was about 175 copies. We're talking twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars in a small stack of cards. With cards that are worth cash that can be turned around really, really quickly, there's a huge need in the community to make a concerted effort to stop theft generally and protect oneself from theft. We've seen a lot of stories recently, some of those on the extreme side, such as a Florida man that was killed for his magic cards. Although we've also seen some positive stories recently, such as a group of individuals that got together to sting someone who had stolen a collection locally, and an individual that was nice enough to return a lost binder with $60,000 in cards to the owner. I mean, this, this is a huge thing that someone is kind enough to return that. That's wonderful, and it's a very positive side of what's going on here. Before I dive in too far, I need to share a story myself. I screwed up a few months ago. I went to a Legacy tournament, and I was transitioning from playing Shardless Bug into Grixis Control. And I brought my Shardless Bug deck with me, and my Deck Builder's Toolkit, this small box of about 400 cards that are commons and uncommons in Legacy, along with my high-end binder of play sets for Legacy. And I was building very quickly before the tournament the Grixis Control deck, and I took about 15 cards out of my Shardless Bug deck to build this new deck that I was brewing. I threw them into my deck builder's uh, toolkit. I put everything into my bag. I thought I had put that box into my bag. It turns out that that deck builder's toolkit did not make it home with me. I did not notice it. I was in a rush. I don't know what happened to it. I was a bit sick at the time. I probably shouldn't have even been showing up to a Magic tournament. I'd had Dayquil earlier that day. And when I got home, I just threw down my bag, crashed for the next day, felt better, and then went out of town for a trip. So it was a week later before I noticed that the Deck Builder's Toolkit, along with about 15 cards from my Shardless Bug deck, was missing entirely. It was devastating to me personally. I felt so kind of betrayed. I reached out to the community locally and talking to local stores, trying to figure out what had happened, if anybody had seen the cards. Some of these cards were extremely distinct. Three of the cards were FBB duels. Uh, four of them were Japanese abrupt decays. Uh, these are cards that you don't normally see floating around unless you're at a major GP. It took me a while to trade back for those cards. It was partially my fault. I really shouldn't have brought those cards out in public. I shouldn't have been rushing. I shouldn't have been doing it while I was sick. Uh, I, I've traded back for most of those cards. I don't want this to be a pity thing about me. I just want to let you know that anybody can get hit with theft and that if you are not 100% aware of your cards, paying attention, you can have those things stolen. I was able to get pretty much everything back except for four extremely well-played beta bolts that I had since I was a kid. It still kind of saddens me that I don't have those because Red Deck Wins is the one deck that I kept all the way through year after year. And it took me about a month to get back to playing tournaments uh, regularly because I was just really bummed. I still was doing videos at the time and I tried to do a video about this and I was just so angry that 
I couldn't talk about this, so I, I focused on other things. Uh, at this point, I got the cards back. Please don't worry about me. Destructive revelries and little things from the deck builder's toolkit, I'm still kind of building back up. But what I've really focused on since then is some tips to try to help individuals not have this happen to them. The number one thing, or number 10 on this list, that I'm really recommending to individuals is don't leave your bags or decks unattended at any point in time. Uh, University of Washington did a study, uh, I believe it was a year or two ago, uh, where they went into a computer lab, had someone put down their bag, sit there, use the computer for a little while, and then ask the person next to them uh, to watch the bag, and then the person walked away, and then a third person came, grabbed the bag, and walked away. Almost everyone in that situation did not intervene. Those bags just went away. You need to be personally responsible to hold on to that stuff. Trusting a third party there to watch it is going to end very poorly. And if it's a friend, they don't notice it's, it could destroy a friendship. The next thing is contact your local game stores right away. Most people who steal these cards try to flip them very quickly, and a lot of them are not very smart. With regards to the Liliana of the Veils, they stole them from Wizards of the Coast, they went a few blocks away to Shane's, and tried to sell them at a game store. Lots of collections show up in local game stores. Game stores are used to watching out for this stuff, but they need to know that the cards have been stolen. Go to Google, grab everything within 35, 40 miles. Often thieves are lazy. They'll use Craigslist, they'll use their local game stores, and then they'll use eBay, but with their location as where they just stole the cards from. So watch those things. I've seen full collections recovered recently because a local game store was alerted and cards had been stolen. Do something to mark your binders. Lots and lots of binders look the same. There's a terrible scam going around currently where someone will ask to look at your binder while having the same binder themselves and then switch the binders. They may even change the cards in the front so that you don't know that the binder is entirely empty. Do something non-magic to your binder. Put that giant Pokemon sticker on there. Put a stop sign on there, something that lets you know that it's your binder and that you can see it walking away. Otherwise, this switch scam could easily work on you. When trading, trade with one person at a time. I know it gets really exciting. You've got this mosh pit style atmosphere going on at GPs where 20 people are crowded around and people are trading for power and they're looking at binders and somebody else has to just look at a binder. At the last GP, I know somebody who handed a binder to someone and didn't see it again. Fortunately, it was a very low value, value binder, but if you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody engaging in a trade, they've got your binder, you've got theirs, that's not going to happen. Criminals, take advantage of this chaos, this melee. Pax had a bunch of decks disappear. A good friend of mine lost a modern deck. It was because there was no room to physically sit down to trade, to play games. People were literally crowding in on the sides of the walls. There were decks just sitting everywhere. There was no physical room for people to safely trade or play there. And that is what criminals are looking for, is this chaos where they can come in, take advantage of the situation, and walk away with your cards and your collection. Don't leave your cards in your car. Often, cards are worth more than the car. Individuals see a bag in a car, it's very easy to just go through the window and grab that. The person stealing it may not even know that it's magic cards, although I know at least two cases recently where individuals' cars were targeted specifically for their magic cards. If you've got a Modern or a Legacy deck, even a standard deck is a few hundred dollars. Don't leave it in your car. Take it with you. Hold it on you. It's much less likely to be stolen. It's not an opportunity that's left alone. Make it easy for people to return things to you. Most people are actually really nice. If they pick up a deck, they see your name in it, they see your phone number, 
maybe even a cash reward for its return, the chances that you're going to get that back go way up. If somebody is morally thinking about whether to return this or not, the fact that you've humanized it with your name and an easy opportunity for them not only to return it, but to get rewarded for returning it, your chances of getting that back are much, much higher overall. If you're going to a Pro Tour, Qualifier, GP, or anything else, and you're there to qualify, focus on qualifying. Don't bring your trade cards with you. Leave your trade cards at home. Leave them in a safe in the hotel room. If you are doing really well, you're XO, you're in round seven, you're playing for day two, you're in the middle of a trade, you just hear that we've got five minutes to get to the table, you're going to rush off to that table. I saw this happen recently at a PPTQ. Fortunately, the person that the individual was trading with was extremely honest, took the binder up to the store owner, and the individual got back the binder. But they walked away from $2,000 in cards to go play their next round. I believe it was Melissa de Toro uh, talked about this in an article a few years back. If you're going to make it to the Pro Tour, you go to events, you're either there to qualify or you're there to trade. Anything that distracts you from qualifying means that you're going to do worse playing in the event and you're not going to do that great in trading either. Separate those out. Don't give yourself this situation where you turn what could be a really great day, making it to day two or top eight or to the pro tour, into a devastating loss of thousands of dollars. I'm going to be a little more proactive with these next two. These are things that people aren't usually aware of. Unfortunately, they come into play after a collection has been stolen. If you have homeowners or renters insurance, Make sure that it's of an amount that will cover the lost cards and make sure that your company understands that that is an asset. Call your company. Read your policy. Look at how much is covered. I myself, when I was very young, had some cards stolen that were covered under a homeowner's policy. It was huge to me. It meant that I still got to play the game. When dealing with insurance companies, they're not always the easiest to deal with. Prepare yourself for this worst case scenario. Have a list of all of your cards listing their values that you update on a regular basis. I'd recommend keeping it in a spreadsheet, maybe even Google Docs that has a wonderful version history to it so you can see when you added or removed cards, it becomes a living document. If your collection, though, is worth more than $1,000, and if you've got a competitive meta, and if you've got a competitive modern deck, it probably is, I would also seriously look at getting an appraisal of your collection. If you've been going to the same local game store for many years and you bought most of your cards there, you can probably just go in, talk to the owner, ask him to write up a letter, show him the collection, show him the list, and have him verify both his background, because this is the type of document that would need to be used in court. I've done some expert testimony on things as weird as uh, Twitter before for court. And the court is going to want to see that the person who did the appraisal has the qualifications to do that. If I was writing one of these up, I would list 20 years in the game, the fact that I was a manager of a store, that I had bought major collections, that I was in charge of buying and selling, that I have a YouTube channel where I deal with MTG Finance on a monthly basis, those type of things. So list their, their qualifications, list the value, the replacement cost to the collection, and some highlights in the collection, and then attach that complete list of the cards in the collection. This type of appraisal and list can be done after the cards are stolen, but it's going to be much more circumspect by the insurance company. If you do this before cards are stolen, your chances of the insurance company even contesting it go way, way down. Be prepared in advance. I also recommend pictures or a video. The nice part, though, about having the appraisal, having that third-party individual look at it, a picture or a video doesn't show you condition very well. 
and it also doesn't show that the cards are real versus counterfeits. You need that non-biased third party to really attest to the value of these cards, especially when you get over that thousand, two thousand dollar range. Normally, in doing an appraisal like this, there may be a small cost to it, a few hundred dollars for a collection, an individual is compensated for their time in putting together that document. It's going to cost a lot more if you have them categorize your whole collection. You should do that on your own and take it to them, um, offer to pay them, offer them an example of the type of letter that you need so that you're prepared. The last thing that I really want to end on, though, is a very positive note. We need to watch out for each other. I used to use this Sarah Angel as my icon for the channel before I had a logo there in the upper left hand side. It is very dear to my heart. It's one of the coolest misprints out there, Time Elemental Sarah Angel. I went to a major event. I carried this around as an icon and I put it down on the table and I was really excited after a win and I grabbed my whole deck, I walked away and I left it there at the table. A wonderful local player at the time who is now a tournament organizer over at Card Kingdom, Frank Stanley, uh, saw it, knew that it was mine, held on to it and brought it to me. Having those great people in the community watching out for each other is one of the best things that we can do to prevent theft in the community. Thank you, Frank. Another practical note here on the end, if you're ever using those control magic effects, Try to put some type of a large die on them or something that lets you know that the card has been moved from side to side. I know some individuals at Vintage Weekend uh, that unfortunately accidentally had cards end up in their opponent's deck because they were shuffling back together after a deck fade and activation. Watch out for that red right hand. Keep your cards safe. For more practical magic tips, subscribe to the channel. Thank you everybody who's out there on Patreon making this channel possible. I greatly appreciate it. We've got some fun finance videos coming up here in the near future and two EDH videos hopefully before the end of the month. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, everyone. Take care.